Hello, welcome to the Preclinical Imaging Knowledge Sharing Video Forum. I'm Dr. Alexandra Delisle and Director of Technical Applications at Perkin Elmer for InVivo Imaging. If you have questions and want to explore further, feel free to email me at alexandra.delisle at perkinelmer.com. Today we will discuss the well to cell to animal bridge and the benefits of 3D cell culture biomarker imaging. Perkinelmer's portfolio offers solutions for all steps of the drug discovery workflow, starting at the DNA, RNA and protein levels all the way up to studying humans. Our current emphasis is to move assays towards higher translational relevance in order to reduce the high compound failure rate. By introducing more relevant disease models like three-dimensional cell cultures and microtissues, and by creating more relevant readouts like biomarker information and dynamic behavior of cells, we have the possibility to reduce the failure rate and provide better in vitro assays. When using two-dimensional cell assays followed by small animal tests, compound failure rates and drug attrition rates are very high since these assay systems are not sufficient to predict how a new medicine might affect a human body. How do we get to better translational relevance? We know that the tools we have for imaging of 2D cell cultures can also be applied to cells in three dimensions. Our in vivo team has developed small animal biomarker imaging agents. Bringing together 3D cell culture and biomarker imaging, we can obtain more relevant in vitro assay readouts with a higher translational relevance to humans. 3D microtissue culture offers a better intermediate model with less false positives. It is high throughput, helps refine animal models, de-risks NME decision-making, facilitating fast-track discovery to IND filing. Here is a cartoon illustrating biomarker imaging from cells to 3D microtissues and finally into the animal. 3D microtissues are more relevant to disease since cells retain physiological functions, cells produce their own extracellular matrix, Cells more fully express biological targets. Cells have an in vivo-like biomarker phenotype. You can culture homogeneous or heterogeneous tissues. Microtissues allow for long-term survival and dynamic readouts. In our first experiment, we analyzed the growth of microtissues on the operetta. We used HD29 cancer cells and treated the microtissues with two reference compounds, 5-FU and starosporin. We then analyzed the microtissue size 72 hours after treatment and found that the tissues respond nicely to the compounds as visualized by the tissue area dose response curves. As firefly luciferase light emission is ATP dependent, luciferase is considered a life death stain. Measurement of luciferase light emission can be used to quantify cell proliferation in 3D culture. A well plate with 3D luciferase cell culture is imaged here in the IVIS in vivo imaging system. This work was published by Drs. Neil Fido et al. in 2011 in the Journal of Biomedical Materials Research. A spectrum of biomarker imaging probes is available for you to choose from. For oncology we have hypoxia, folate, HER2, apoptosis, integrin, catepsin and matrix metalloprotease probes available. We have been working with Insphero, a company in Switzerland that invented a technology to make microtissues available to high throughput applications. Their technology comprises of a scaffold free 3D cell culture system and they generated a plate that can hold hanging drops in a very stable way. You actually seed your cells into the hanging drops and that is where the spheroid is forming. After two to four days of culture, you can transfer your spheroids into an assay-ready plate by adding more media. This so-called gravity trap plate has a special conical shape which centers the microtissue in the middle of the well, allowing the operetta to image the entire well with the 10x objective. High throughput screening of 3D microtissues can be accomplished with Perkin Elmer's operetta high content imaging system. Microtissues can be imaged by bright field and fluorescence here is an example of HD29 colon carcinoma microtissues with co-registration of Brightfield and Hoechst and hypoxysense fluorescence. To study catepsin activity in a cellular model, 
we have chosen HT29 colon carcinoma cells. We did a classical toxicity assay using treatment with 5-fluorouracil, which is a well-established drug for colorectal cancer treatment. 72 hours post 80 micromolar 5-FU treatment, we, ha we have assessed the number of viable cells, apoptotic cells and dead cells, using a triple dye overlay with Hoechst, Yopro and Bobo. Hoechst in blue labels all cells equally. Yopro in green is specific to apoptotic cells. Bobo in yellow labels dead cells only. ProSense 680 in red visualizes catepsin activity in cellular lysosomes. ProSense results in labeling of lysosomes as this is the organelle where catepsin proteases reside. We conclude that ProSense 680 is activated in living and early apoptotic cancer cells. Catepsin activity declines in 5-FU-induced late apoptosis. ProSense allows discrimination between early and late apoptotic cells and displaces ProSense into the category of metabolism markers. This slide actually shows that we can visualize these biomarkers in the spheroid microtissue model. Staining of microtissues with three agents results in characteristic labeling phenotypes, which all resemble very much in vivo solid tumors. ProSense shows a homogeneous labeling of the microtissue, as it does also in vivo in the mouse. MMPSense is mainly activated in isolated cells outside of the tissue that might have escaped the tumor. HypoxySense shows strongest activation in the core region of tissues, clearly indicating the presence of an oxygen gradient towards the core. And finally, we used mice bearing HT29 tumors and injected them with ProSense to visualize the catepsin activity again. As shown in the 2D cell culture studies, ProSense is specific for viable and early apoptotic cells and can therefore be used to image the metabolically active part of the tumor. Therefore, ProSense is a very valuable tool to study tumor growth and drug treatment efficacy in vivo. When we treat with 5-FU, the tumors are significantly smaller than the untreated controls. Using the operetta, we have analyzed the hypoxysense intensity in the core regions of microtissues and found that larger microtissues show a stronger hypoxysense intensity than smaller tissues. Various tissues can be grown as homogeneous or heterogeneous microtissues, such as skin microtissues consist of fibroblasts and keratinocytes in co-culture. Neurospheres are made from primary rat cortex population cultures and contain astrocytes and neurons. Liver microtissues contain primary rat hepatocytes in co-culture with non-parenchymal cells. And lastly, we can also image embryoid bodies. Furthermore, beyond drug development and toxicity testing, 3D microtissues can facilitate personalized medicine. Therapy response analyses, as determined in patient-derived 3D microtumors, can help identify the right drugs for the right patients. And imaging biomarkers such as apoptosis, catepsins, HER2, drug resistance, hypoxia, angiogenesis, invasiveness, and differentiation in 3D microtumors can help predict the long-term therapeutic response of a cancer and enable to design combination strategies to overcome limitations of therapy. Thanks for viewing this knowledge sharing presentation. Stay tuned for more videos. If you have questions, feel free to contact me by email at alexandra.delil at